Hey guys, it's Julie from Julie's Designs. Today I am just working on finishing up projects. I have lots of stuff that's been started that's not quite finished up. So today I'm going to see how much stuff I can get done before the kids get home from school. So we're just going to work and hang out. So the first thing is, if you watched one of my haul videos, these two washing boards were in the haul video. I like the way that this one looks. It's nice and aged, but this one looks a little newer to me, so I'm going to go ahead and age it a little. All I'm going to do is add my antique mix to it. If you want to know exactly how to make this, I'll put the link to that video in there. Um, all you do is you put it on top, and it just makes it look a little bit more aged. The reason I'm trying to get all these projects done is because this week I am doing a live Facebook sale. It's something I did for the first time last month and it went really well. So I'm going to do it again tomorrow night. And of course I have nothing ready for it. So it's a mad scramble to get it done. And the reason I started doing these videos is because I like to stage my products and show people how to use them but that takes a really long time to do so i thought you know what it'd be fun just to do a video i can show people close-ups and answer any questions tell them how i would use it and yeah it went great and was less much less um time consuming than staging everything and taking pictures and so I already, uh, after that live sale, I went ahead and scheduled my next one. So I had a month to prepare for this, and I haven't. But you know what? That's how I get stuff done. If I wouldn't have planned it a month in advance, then this week would come, and I'd be like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. I have to put it out there, and I will get it done. And whatever doesn't sell, at the live sale, I will bring to Fine and Dandy. Fine and Dandy is a gift shop in Gonzales, Louisiana. And I pay like a rental fee over there and I bring my stuff. So it's perfect because whatever I don't sell, I can just bring over there and it'll sell. Just make whatever comes to my mind. Move this out of the way so I don't get paint on it. These are cute. I know that I don't need them because I already did my laundry room makeover. So uh, somebody else can have them. I wish they were a little bit bigger, but that's okay. I paid four dollars for them, and I think I'm gonna sell them for seventeen. I do price everything. I'm going to put a price tag on everything. It does take a little more time, but when you are doing a live sale and you have comments and everything that you're trying to read, you definitely will get flustered and forget things. So I highly recommend just having all your stuff have a price tag. And that way I don't need to mess with it again. If it doesn't sell, it's priced and ready to go to the shop to be sold. I don't have to price all the stuff is done i can box it up okay we're gonna... i put a few coats on this and it's not getting quite as dark as i want so while i seal it i'm gonna take the actual antiquing wax and just kind of go over it one more time that way since it's wet it won't soak in quite as much but it's definitely going to darken it up you don't want to put a lot on your brush i just dip it in very slightly and then just wipe it on get into all the creases and everything I'm even going to go over the metal with it and that'll kind of antique this as well because it's a little bit bright it's not as rusty as I like my metal to be there's really no way to mess this up because even if you get too much on there, you can wipe it off. You can add a little bit of water if you're seeing lines and you don't like that. I like kind of like a more muddled look where it's all kind of blended together where you don't see brush marks and stuff like that. You just 
keep doing it till you know you get the effect that you want there's there's no uh, right or wrong it's just whatever look you want okay I think that's good so this one is a nice age look this one's like a little bit darker I don't know if the same person will buy it but they're gonna look cute All right, that on the side, right? let it dry. Okay, next I'm gonna show y'all something. It's already done, but I just want to tell y'all how I made it. I did it quite a while ago. So I found these ceramic irons at a garage sale. I paid 50 cents for them. I have two left. I can't remember how many I started out with, but it was a lot. Let me show you up close and I'm tell you what I did. So I'm pretty sure they were originally black. And what I did was I put more black paint on it and then you sprinkle cinnamon on it and it gives you like this rusty look and I just kind of layered it on so it really looked authentic. And then it had a little top to it so I put a plant in it. I like lavender in a laundry room. I just think it looks good. It also has a hole. So mine, if you saw my laundry room makeover, I hung it on the wall. And then I hung a towel on the side, and that was super cute. But it also could just sit on a shelf, and that's an option. I paid 50 cents for these, and I'm going to sell them for 12. I'm going to go ahead and tag them right now. And let me grab my tags. I'm going to show y'all what they look like. So I ordered these from, I don't know, one of those online printing places. I can't remember the name of it. And I like them because they're really thick. They're just business cards. You can go cheap and print stuff out from your computer, but trust me, you want to spend a little bit and get the thicker ones because when you're doing shows and stuff, they get messed up if they're cheap. These last, and I don't have problems with them breaking off, so it's worth it. And I just have the name. Okay, focus, focus. All right, it's not focusing, but it has my name and it just has a little uh, dollar sign on there. So I can write in or write in what it is and the amount on there. That way, um, if it falls off or something, I know what it is. And I don't get too technical with it. Like I'm gonna write ceramic iron. You can get one with like all your info and everything on it, but when I sell at Fine and Dandy, I can't have my personal info on there. So I keep it very generic and I, um, I have like uh, business focus cards made up. So when I do shows, I'll hand that out instead of putting it on this tag so I can use the same tags for everything. And most people do want your info when you're doing a show. So I just got a bunch of those made and they should last me a while and I just hand those out when I do a show. So there we go. I just like to put it, I put a punch a hole in it and put a little bit of twine and that's it. It's ready to go. So sell those at the live sale. This thing I already fixed up. Earlier in the week, I picked it up at a garage sale for a dollar. It's like a mail holder thing and it was falling apart. So these pieces were actually off, the wood pieces. And so I painted it white and then I was gonna put it back together and paint these pieces white. But then I realized I really like the contrast between the white and the natural wood. So I just sanded these down and put my antiquing a concoction on them and I love the way it looks so it's just kind of natural wood distressed and I'm going to put a plant in it just to show people different options I think it look cute with either three different plants or like some herbs or something or a plant and you can actually use it to put your mail in Either way, I just want to show people there's other options to use this. It already has the hooks on the back. This one's ready to go. I need to think about the price on this one. Probably somewhere around 20 Okay, next, if you saw my video about the timeout chair, I have a 
another one of those, so I need to get that one done. These are the legs. They're natural wood, but I want to darken them and antique them a little bit. So I'm just going to put a layer of this on. Now this will take better than that uh, the washboard took, just because they're totally natural. That kind of had a finish on it, so it has to work a little bit harder on that one. When it's natural wood, it just takes so well. And that's why I call it an antiquing concoction, because you can take like a natural new piece of wood and make it look old and i just love that look at the difference a little water a little antiquing wax it gives it the perfect finish so i have to do these legs and then i'm going to artificially distress the top because i can naturally distress it because it has all kind of bright colors underneath. So when you naturally distress something, it's going to take uh, the color that's underneath and let it show through. So if you don't want that color to show through, but you want a distressed look, then you need to use your antiquing wax, your brown or whatever color you want it. And then you put that on top of the paint and it'll give it a distressed look. Really quick, really easy. There's no magic way to do it. So today I am working in my outside kitchen where I do a lot of my projects. My husband said I need to explain what an outside kitchen is because not everybody knows what that is. I know, I think it's kind of self-explanatory what outside kitchen is, but you never know people from different places call stuff different things. So it's basically a building that is not attached to our main home. It has a full kitchen and a half bath. And so it's basically like a living room kitchen and then it has a bathroom in here. And we just like, basically like a party room, I guess. And we just hang out in here. If we have parties, this is usually where we hang out. We also, you know, there's a lot of people in my family. So if somebody needs their space, this is a good place to come. My teenage son likes to hang out in here away from the chaos that goes on in the house. This is where I work. It's nice to not have any of my work inside of my house. I try to keep my house clean. This room, I, unless we're having people over, I don't really worry about it. You can't keep everything clean all the time. I've come to that realization. So I concentrate on keeping my house clean. This is where I work. I'm not gonna pick everything up only to come out and take it out again. So I don't uh, I don't really worry about it. You can stress about something else. Okay, let me make sure I got all the bottoms. Even though they don't really show, you just wanna make sure it's done. And then we, uh, right behind me is the water. So we live on the, wa the water. So a lot of people in this neighborhood have an outside party room, kitchen kind of thing like this. I don't cook out here on a daily basis, only if we have people over because people, people will say, oh, you should cook out here and then the kitchen will always be clean. Well, you still got a kitchen to clean. So I cook in the house. Okay, so here's the top of the timeout bench. And move these out of the way. I'm not gonna use the concoction. I'm gonna use the actual antiquing wax. And you don't wanna put a lot on your brush. You just wanna put a little bit and then I go around the edges. And I just pass the brush along the edges. I see a few spots I want to kind of touch up. So you can just grab a wet rag and just touch those up. And 
and this is kind of hard to mess up too. You might be kind of scared to do it the first time, but literally if you mess up, all you gotta do is wipe it. So I'm kind of wiping it now that I put it on and it'll darken your paint as well. So it'll make the paint a little bit more off white instead of so bright white. I'm gonna add a little bit to the middle and just rub it in. Since I got it on the white, I wanna make sure all the white's the same color. I think I need to not use my wet paintbrush. Okay. So now that I got the paint tinted, I'm gonna get a dry brush and do the sides again. Cause it kinda dripped with a wet paintbrush. Let me grab a dry one. Okay, so you just want a little bit of paint on your brush. And you're just gonna kinda rub it on the edges. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna do the edges on the bottom cause that's gonna show too. So I want that to be distressed, but let me show you what it looks like up close. So you see how the edges just have a little bit of distressing. And you can see when I wiped the brown onto the white, it just picked up some of that brown as well. So it looks a little distressed, it's not so bright white. All right, put that on the side. Okay, next I'm gonna go work on this project. So, this is a true trash to treasure. I picked this piece up on the side of the road and it is a crib. So what I did was I took the hardware off and then I cut the bottom. It had legs which were cute, but when this is hanging on a wall, I don't want it to look like a crib hanging on a wall. I want it to look like a sign. So I thought with a flat bottom, it would look more like a sign. So what I'm going to do is going to take this to my workshop and I'm going to go spray it with my spray gun white. And then I'll bring it back in here and we will distress it. And my plan is to not put anything on the middle. What I'm going to do is at my live sale, I'm going to show this piece. And then I'm hoping somebody will buy it and tell me what they want on it. If they don't, then I will figure out what to put on it, but I'd rather sell it as a custom piece and just have somebody tell me what to put on it. I think that'll be an easier way to sell it. So we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna run to my shop and paint this and then I'll be back. All right, I went paint that piece and while that's drying, we're gonna move on to the next piece. Now, if you watched my video on this, you know what this is, I made this. And I do not have a place for it in my house. It's so cute, but just at the age the baby's at right now, I can't really put it anywhere. So I'm gonna sell it at the live sale. I like the raw edge, but to resell it, I feel like I need a little bit of a cleaner look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend the edges over and hot glue them. That way it has a nice clean line. So I'm gonna spread it out, turn it over. And all I'm gonna do is put a strip of high glue and then bend it over and it'll be good to go. When you're reselling stuff, you just have to do things that appeal to the masses. That's why I do a lot of white. Unless somebody makes uh, a custom order with me puts in a custom order because at the end of the day white is what sells people are comfortable with white they know it's going to look good in their house whereas you go with a crazy color people don't really know what to do with it so you know a raw edge for some people is a little crazy so i'm going to clean it up 
It doesn't take a lot of time, and I think this will be easier to sell with the clean edge. And this is something I tell my son all the time because he's such an artist. And I'm trying to get him to use his talent to make money, but it's like you can't tell him anything. He wants to do what he wants to do, and he doesn't want to do anything else. And I tell him, you know, that is fine. You do what you enjoy doing, but if you're trying to make money, you have to do things that will also appeal to everyone else. I have my stuff that fulfills my creative, you know, void where I can do stuff I just like. Luckily, the things that I like, other people like too. But if you're in it to make money, then you have to do stuff that other people are going to like as well. It's, you just have to. So that's something I'm trying to teach him. But you know, teenagers, they don't like to listen. You know, I get plenty of custom orders where I'm like, oh my God, I do not like that. But you know what? They're paying for it. You do what they want you to do. They're the boss. And in your house, you do what you want to do. So that's what I'm trying to get through to him. He can still do everything he wants to do. But he should also come up with stuff that's going to appeal to everybody. I just got some fuzzies on it when I turned it over from my dirty table. All right, this piece is ready to go. I might just take a, take a lint brush and brush it off the top. I got lots of like sawdust and all on this thing. So this is super cute. It is a sweater. If you didn't see my video, I'll tell you it's a sweater material, but then I also put a piece of drop cloth underneath. That way it doesn't, um, you know, a sweater material is very stretchy, so this will keep it sturdy. I mean, you can't sit on it. It's just a decorative piece, but so cute. See, now it has a nice clean edge instead of a raw edge. Looks good. Bows up flat, easy storage. All right, on to the next piece. Let me unplug my glue gun so I don't forget to do that. I oh, can't tell you how many times I forget to unplug my glue gun. All right, so these pieces are in the sink. What I did was I, I love finding very ornate um, picture frames in a dark color because when you spray them white and then wet distress them, they look amazing. This piece had the glass attached. I couldn't get it off. So I just painted it with that, but that's not a big deal because it literally just wipes off the glass. It doesn't stay on there. So when you are wet distressing, what you're doing is you're taking a wet rag and you're wiping away the paint. And the reason it was in the sink is because I like to kind of wet mine ahead of time. I find it makes it easier to wet distress. It doesn't take quite as long. And you're just wiping away the paint it pretty much just grabs at the edges and it gives it a very naturally aged look so if you had a piece that was naturally distressed obviously the edges that were touched more that would be the places that were more worn and so that's the places i like to pull off the paint and if it's being a little stubborn i'll even have a piece of sandpaper on the side and if you can get like a little bit off then it's easier to wipe away so i'm just going to go on the edges just pull off the paint a little bit and then come back with the wet rag and i will probably sell these for maybe ten dollars I want to say I paid a dollar for them. 
but I don't remember. I doubt it would be more than a dollar. I'm pretty cheap. Definitely, unless like you know it's something somebody's gonna buy, I feel like even though I should trust my look and trust my eye, I still get nervous about buying stuff. So it's like if I don't pay a lot of money for it, then it's okay if it doesn't sell. But at the same time, I don't think I've ever had anything that didn't sell. Everything eventually sells. And if you try, like say you painted something you want to try a color. Like I had this color that I called Form Fresh in the spring and I absolutely loved it. And I painted a bunch of pieces with it and a few sold, but some of them didn't. So I actually, now that it's not spring anymore or summertime, I actually brought those back home and I'm just gonna repaint them into a white or a different color. So that's another option too, if you have something and it didn't sell and you want it to sell, you know, if you're cool with waiting, that's fine. But I feel like I waited all spring, all summer, it didn't sell. I'm gonna bring it home and paint it a different color and it'll sell. So that's another option. If you have something that you did and it's not working out, you can always just repaint it. So this one has like a gold undertone to it. I think it was all the way gold before, if I remember correctly. I'm gonna get better at taking befores for y'all, so y'all know what it looks like. Yeah, and the back is black, so you can't see. But, oh, oh this gold color with the white on top and then the gold coming through so pretty it's pretty for year round but it's also like a pretty christmas color y'all see that so i'm not heavily distressing it i'm just getting the edges so the details really show really cute and the backers for this where did i put them they were really nice like velvet backers they weren't cheapo and this feels like plaster or something, not plastic. So this is a super nice frame. And then I have two like this that are very ornate and pretty. And I think these were brown. So I'm just going to rub the paint off and it'll make the details really show through. And you can distress as much as you want or as little as you want. I basically just like to do the edges and that's it. I don't like it overly distressed. I just like it where the details show through. relaxing to do this not really on camera because I feel like I need to be talking to y'all right now but when I just sit and do this by myself while I'm watching TV or whatever I find it very relaxing oh and the weather's so beautiful today so here in South Louisiana like nice days you need to really take advantage of them because they don't happen often and for some reason they only happen in the middle of the week like it's very rare you get a nice beautiful day on a weekend it's like great weather all week and you know what happens on the weekend it rains oh i hate that but i'm lucky enough where i can enjoy uh, the weather during the week as well and i love just like i have everything open right now it's super nice outside i love having my house opened up and letting the fresh air come in. So yeah, just I use the combination of a damp towel and a little bit of sandpaper. Now, if it's like a big wooden piece, I just sand it with my sander. But for these small ornate pieces, this is definitely the technique you are gonna wanna use. So let me show you how great this looks. 
I love it. So I just need to clean the <clears throat> clean the glass, put the backs on, put a price on these. Those are ready to go. All right, what am I work on next? Let me see what's behind me. Oh, why don't I finish this up? So I need to take the bottom of this and not the bottom, but the bottom edge right here. I need to distress that. So that way, when you look at it from the side, both edges are distressed. I don't know what I do with my paintbrush. I don't use any kind of special paintbrushes. Just, I just get whatever Walmart has. I don't like to pay a lot of money for them because sometimes I forget to clean them and then they gotta go in the garbage can. So you just want to rub along the edges of your piece and it will make it look like you sanded it. That's good. Now I just need to put the words on it and this piece is done. Okay, I'm gonna go check on my other piece that I painted and see if that is ready to be distressed and probably clean up this mess a little bit so I have room to work. Okay, now I'm gonna be working on this bowl. It was a wooden bowl and it was a great color but it had some stains. So unfortunately I had to paint it I painted it white and then I put the antiquing wax on it and then I added a little black. Let me show y'all up close so you can see. I really wanted it to look old and aged and I did a combination of sanding it with the sander and um, wet distressing it with the wet towel. So every time I find a wooden bowl, I pick it up because they always sell great. What I do is I either put bless this food on it, or if it's a bigger bowl, I'll put fruit. This one, since it's kind of like an oval shape, I'm gonna put bless this food. So how I write my words on is I do my design on the computer, print it out, and then I use masking tape and I tape it to the object. And then I take carbon paper. I just have a little piece cut right now because that'll make it easier than a whole sheet. And I'll put it under my template. And then I trace. Oop. So since it's round, I'm going to kind of carefully do each word to make sure it goes around the bowl. This is a really good item if you're looking to resale stuff. These always sell fast. I would love to do one in a fun color if somebody custom ordered one. I did have somebody on the waiting list for one of these, but I ended up just painting a bowl that they had already. And they used that instead of waiting for me to find one because I don't go to the store and find stuff. It's just whatever I can find in the wild. That's what I like to call it. Or in my travels, that's what my husband says. In your travels, if you find this, pick it up for me. Now you definitely want to use a scripty font when doing this because if you try to use a precise font, it would be hard to um, make it look straight. Like if anything was off, it would show. So with a scripty font, you can kind of bend it and 
and if you mess it up you can kind of fix it whereas it was if it was a very straight font that would be hard to fix Ooh, stuck to me okay the s's are a little long so can you see it it's just a very light outline but it gives me something to follow Okay, where's my paint pen? All right, I'm gonna use my Sharpie paint pen. Water-based, gives it a nice flat finish. It'll look good. And you just want to have a steady hand. You just shake up the marker and push down to get the paint to come out. You shouldn't have to do it a whole lot. If you're doing it a lot, then I need a new paint pen. You can get these at Walmart or Amazon, Michaels. I have a link below to these Sharpies. So they have two different Sharpie paint pens. They have water based and oil based. The water base is a nice matte finish. The oil base is a shiny finish. So that's the difference in those two. is also very relaxing for me when I can just sit and paint. Alright, this bowl is done. Bless this who cute. How cute would this be with some little, it could be a centerpiece I think, or you could put some fruit or something in it. Okay, y'all see the crib in the background? Let me show you. Sorry, my chair makes a lot of noise. I need to put some pads on the bottom of it. Let me show y'all up close what I did. So I did a combination of wet distressing and using the sander because it's easy to use the sander for the straight edges, but then hard for the knobs right here, the uh, spindles. So I did a combination of the two of them and I love the way it came out. I'm going to leave the middle part where the, the uh, lettering is going. I'm not going to distress that. I just distressed all the edges. I love how it gives it like a nice natural look. So even if you have straight edges um, and you use your rotary sander, you can come back with a wet towel in distress and it's going to make it look even a little bit more natural. So I didn't show y'all all of the little details of me doing everything. So if that is something that you want to see, just let me know. I was trying not to make the video too long. I just wanted to show y'all some stuff I was working on. But the kids are home from school now and we're about to have to go to soccer. So I guess that's it for today. But I definitely feel less stressed out knowing that I got some projects done and some stuff labeled and ready to go to my live sale. If you would like to watch one of my live sales, you can follow me on Facebook. I have the link below in the description.
Please like and subscribe to Julie's Designs and Signs for more DIY inspiration and home decor.